Mount Church, uh, do please be seated. Now, you're probably expecting me to say a great deal about all the things that uh, changed yesterday evening and the implications uh, that that will have on this place. Um, luckily for me, uh, Father Patrick has kindly um, offered his services and will say something at the end of Mass about all of that. So it's just left to me to give the usual um, COVID announcements. Um, you're all used to them now, I know, but for the benefit of anyone um, that hasn't heard them before, could we please make sure that we uh, wear masks throughout the service? It looks like everyone is, um, but unless you're reading, um, you'll need to keep that on throughout. Uh, please could we also make sure that we're not sitting um, closer than two metres um, to people that aren't in our household or our bubble. Um, and what else is there to say? I think that's about all of it, isn't it? Um, you may wish to stand during the service, and I wouldn't wish to tell you whether to stand or sit, but do please be mindful if you do want to stand during various parts of the service, that the person behind you may be seated, um, and it would be good if you don't obstruct their view. So I think that's everything, um, so please now remain seated as the choir sing. these two commandments 
and all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Well, today we gather to celebrate the Feast of All Saints, calling to mind the whole fellowship of the saints, those that have gone before us, those that we know in our lives, and those unnamed saints known only to God. Sanctity is a somewhat tricky concept to get our heads around. Is it the most perfect and pious people that display this virtue? Or is every single one of us simply because we believe? Well, we'll get to that later. But it is possible for all of us to further sanctify our lives if we so desire, not through self-flagellation or by never stepping foot in a pub, although that will be easier from Thursday, but it is by searching our own hearts and acknowledging where we have turned away from God, by bringing those thoughts honestly before God with contrite hearts, it is then that we truly begin to hallow our lives. Since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, looking to Jesus in penitence and faith. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate thought. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <laughs>
together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Grant us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those inexpressible joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him <coughs> as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. This is the word of the Lord.
house, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak, and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the mercy, they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. together and celebrate the great number of women and men who the church has recognized down the ages for their holiness of life. And we also celebrate the much greater number of those saints whose names are unknown, those saints known only to God. We might try to be saintly figures ourselves. I must admit I quite like the sound of Saint James of Chesterfield known for his holy living and for his deeply inspiring sermon. I'll try and ignore the laughter just there. But more seriously, what does it mean to be saintly? And who are we talking about when we speak of the saints? I'm sure we've all encountered a certain type of pious Christian who really believes themselves to be saintly. But that's not what it's about. I'm sure we've all encountered a certain type of perfect Christian who never steps a foot wrong, whose reputation is whiter than white. I don't think that's what it's about either. The saints are something else altogether. I suppose the first point to make is that even all the really well-known ones, from St. Peter and Paul down to St. Teresa, all were simultaneously saint and sinner. There is no concept, there never has been, of any human saint being entirely removed from the messiness of life. So firstly, we can say that saintliness isn't the religious or moral perfection that it is sometimes made into. In fact, when we insist that saintliness is the same as moral perfection, then we miss out on some of the real saints. I think the second point to make is that the communion of saints can also sometimes be overstated. It is true that because we are believers, we all belong to the communion of saints. That is the New Testament model. But following this too far, many of the Protestant churches of Europe have all but removed saints from their calendars and their worship. And I don't think that can be right either, because there is something about the lives of particular people that can speak of a special holiness. So secondly, we can say that there is a distinct sanctity to the lives of certain people. If we say that every believer is a saint and no more, then again we miss something of the real saints. So what are we saying, or what am I saying, when we talk about the saints? We've already established that it isn't about moral perfection or anything else like that, but we also established it's something distinctive. 
Now, Saint Jerome, by all accounts, wasn't a very nice man. He didn't have anything particularly nice to say about the women, for example, and there was much anger in his writing. Yet, because of his important work in translating the Holy Scriptures, we still view him as a saintly figure. Paul Tillich, the modern Protestant theologian, is another example. He was known pretty much as an old adulterous goat by the time of his death, yet despite these facets of his personality, I would still call him a saint for his work of theology. There are people from this very church who I wouldn't exactly put next to Mother Teresa in the piety stakes, and yet in my mind they are distinctly saintly figures because of what their lives show to me and to others. And that's because saints show more of Jesus than themselves, whether it is in service to others, whether it is in prayer or in scholarly work, true holiness points to God. The personal flaws don't matter so much. They have a transparency to the divine. Now, Father Patrick was quite right to say in his encyclical for the pew sheet this week that we are called to that same task, to stand out and do great things because of our faith. To reveal something of God in the way we conduct our lives. Alas, we need at least some help to know how to do that in our lives today, to do that in the world out there. And thankfully our Gospel reading aids us in that. This morning we heard the Beatitudes, blessed are the poor, the meek, the pure in heart, and so on. It isn't exactly a laundry list of traits you encounter in many of today's role models. But that's because the Beatitudes are the opposite of strong traits. In a way, they cause us to become less of ourselves, meeker, poorer, more persecuted. And who, especially today, would want to be any of those things? You wouldn't really stand to gain anything. But if we think about the saints, that is exactly what they do. We don't focus on their personalities so much as how they make God known. By following these teachings of Jesus, we can journey towards sanctity, each of us becoming more the person we were created to be, more like Christ and less like ourselves. And so through those words of Jesus Christ, let us embody the Incarnation. Let us become one in Christ. And in that way, yes, we can all be saints. Amen. Let us now affirm our faith in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. 
united in the company of all the faithful and looking for the coming of the kingdom. Let us offer our prayers to God, the source of all life and holiness. In the diocesan cycle of prayer this week, today our prayers are asked for all churches celebrating their patronal festival. In the Anglican Worldwide cycle of prayer today, our prayers are asked for the Church of the Province of West Africa. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the year's mind of this parish church, today we pray for the continued repose of the soul, souls of Ross Haig, Reginald Doncaster, priest, Lucy Ada Dobbs, Clara Rossington, Elsie Cresswell. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. At this time, our prayers have been asked for Jane Hoskin, John Robinson, Sheila Lavery, Carol Kingdom, Joan Lydgate, Teddy, June Franklin, John Kerry, Michael Catton, Patricia Mitchell, Sue Hastings, Jean Maiden, Jane Jackson, David Staves, Ian Mackenzie, Laura, Robin Glasson, Kenneth Hughes, Jane Stretton, Paul Taylor, Margaret, Colin Parnell, Ray Hearn, and Tom Pierce. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Lord, strengthen all Christian people by your Holy Spirit, that we may live as a royal priesthood, a holy nation to the praise of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Lord, in your name, hear our prayer. Bless Livy, our Bishop, and all ministers of your Church, that by faithful proclamation of your word we may be built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets into a holy temple in the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Empower us by the gift of your holy and life-giving Spirit, that we may be transformed into the likeness of Christ, from glory to glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give to the world and its peoples the peace that comes from above, that they may find Christ's way of freedom and life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hold in your embrace all who witness to your love in the service of the poor and the needy, all who minister to the sick and dying, and all who bring light to those in darkness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Touch and heal all those whose lives are scarred by sin or disfigured by pain, that, raised from death to life in Christ, their sorrow may be turned to eternal joy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remember in your mercy all those gone before us who have been well pleasing to you from eternity. Preserve in your faith your servants on earth. Guide us to your kingdom and grant us your peace at all times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hasten the day from east and west, from north and south, and sit at your table in the kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks for the whole company of your saints in glory, with whom in fellowship we join our prayers and praises. By your grace, may we, like them, be made perfect in your love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Time for our second COVID announcement regarding coming up for communion and 
Again, I know most of you are aware of this, but for the benefits of those who don't know it, um, we come up for communion in a single file up to the sanctuary step here. Um, I will be wearing a mask. Could you please make sure you've removed your mask beforehand so that there's no risk of contamination through touching mask and then uh, our hands contacting. Um, please keep thumbs and fingers away as much as you can. Uh, if our hands do touch, there's a very convoluted process of hand sanitizing these, um, which I'm sure we would all enjoy not to have to do. Once you have received communion, um, oh, and I should say, we will say no words um, during the giving of communion. I won't say any, and please don't either. Um, and after you have received communion, um, please go to either side, depending on which side of the church you're sat, uh, and then come back around to your pews. And then finally, if you could put your mask back on, then we will all stay very safe. Thank you. We are fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, through Christ our Lord, who came and preached peace to those who were far away and those who were near. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And now we give you thanks, most gracious God, surrounded by a great crowd of witnesses, and glorified in the assembly of your saints. The glorious company of the apostles praise you, the noble fellowship of prophets praise you, the white-robed army of martyrs praise you. We, your holy church, acclaim you. In communion with angels and archangels, and with all who serve you on earth, and worship you now in hell. We raise our voice to proclaim your glory, forever praising you and singing.
the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. And as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of Our Lady Mary and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread.
Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who will call to his Son. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
Lord, the source of all holiness and giver of all good things. May we who shared at this table as strangers and pilgrims here on earth be welcomed with all your saints to the heavenly feast on the day of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. I'd like to invite Sir Father Patrick to speak. I'm here, and I actually got to do some singing today, which was uh, very pleasant. Uh, there won't be much more uh, singing, certainly not congregational singing, for a long time, it doesn't seem. And we have been advised that there is to be a further four weeks lockdown in England, beginning at one at midnight on Thursday. So if you hadn't noticed that from the news, you would have heard it now from me. The initial rules for churches have already been issued by the government. It says this, churches shall remain closed except for funerals in a limited fashion, private prayer, the streaming of services and a few other bits and pieces. That means that we will not be at odds with the government if we this time do our duty by the people of Chesterfield and keep this church open for them to pray in. We will, however, have to have services without a congregation and unless the legislation changes between now and Thursday, the services will all be streamed once more on Facebook, uploaded to YouTube just as the Wednesday and Sunday services still are. I'm sorry for those of you who are upset and hurt by that. You are not alone. However, if the law says we must or must not do something, that will remain the case. Within reason, we will then follow whatever advice the Church of England passes down to us. But we will this time do our duty by the people of this town as its parish church, and I can assure you of that. It looks mostly like it will be a little, like, little bit like when we were first permitted to have personal prayer in the church again, and the services returned to being streamed from the church rather than from uh, dining rooms and offices. So that's what I'm planning for, for beginning on Thursday. We operated the private prayer arrangements with a small number of volunteers who were invited. I'm hoping that the church will be open, able to be open for more than two hours a day, Monday to Saturday, and that will mean we need more volunteers but we need to be careful to make sure that we don't take those volunteers from people who are in need of shielding. I know that shielding isn't being enforced uh, this time round, but if you are in need of shielding, please do not volunteer and, ask, and find me having to say no. But if you wish to volunteer to be here for a couple of hours on one day a week, Monday to Saturday, then please email me your name. Tomorrow there will not be a lockdown. There will be a solemn requiem as usual at half past seven in this church. If you wish to pass names to me, please do so by email. Please do not write little notes because that's COVID-19 nightmare areas. So if you can't get the names to me by email, please be assured that we are going to start off with last year's list. Add any names, remove any doublers, in other words, names which have been submitted twice, and in that way we hope to be able to cover all the names that people would like to have read out tomorrow at the Solemn Requiem. Please be aware also that Masses tomorrow, Tuesday and Wednesday will still be with congregations. They will be, uh, Monday is at St. Catherine's Altar, Tuesday and Wednesday will be at the High Altar and you are also and everyone else is welcome to attend those Masses. I think I've given you everything that I'm able to at the moment 
As soon as the announcement was made yesterday, there were people up and down the Church of England jumping up and down saying that uh, we want more detail, but of course there wasn't time to produce more detail. The detail will come out over the next few days. I will make sure that any detail that people need to know is passed out there, and I hope that you will be as patient and forbearing as you have been throughout all of this, and that you will be as supportive of myself and James and others who are trying to make the life of this church continue at the centre of this town for the sake of this town's people, not just those of us who worship here. So thank you for listening to that. The COVID-19 announcement for the end of Mass. Please don't forget to put any pieces of paper that you have touched in the quarantine box. Please make sure that you have filled in your attendance sheet so that if track and trace comes into uh, force, then uh, we'll be able to trace you. If there is anything such as the pew sheet, which you want to take away with you, please do so, but please don't leave things around. That includes the pen which you have used to fill in. As you leave the church, please be mindful of the fact that in tier two, it is illegal for us to be sociable inside the church. It is not illegal for us to be sociable in groups of no more than six outside the church, and the sun has come out to facilitate that. So please be mindful of that too. And also please be careful and forbearing with one another as you leave to keep at least two meters between yourself and everyone else. Thank you very much. Well, I'm glad I didn't have to say all of that. Let us pray. God, who has prepared for us a city with eternal foundations, give you the grace to share the inheritance of the saints in glory and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in peace.